Good morning guys and welcome back to another episode of Barham Engines. Like I have said before guys, thank you ever so much for pressing that subscribe button. If you haven't yet subscribed, um, it's free to do so, so just please press that subscribe button, hit the notification bell and you'll be notified whenever we post a video. Thanks guys. First of all, you can see that John has been cracking on with the Lagonda Rapier engine. We're all pretty much built up now. There's a few bits left over, a bit of pipe work, etc. Um, he's given the block and the head a paint and what have you, and um, got the triffid of a chain set up on. We've still got to do the, the timing on this. This has got a, a, a vernier setup, really. If you take these caps off, the three bolts out, the caps off, it's got a sort of peg type system, the same as the Porsche 911s have got, the older ones. What you do is you time it up um, using the DTI gauge like we do on all the other stuff for the verniers. It's got a series of holes around here and you sort of see which holes line up with the, the pulley at the back of this sprocket and you just put the, put the plate in with the peg and then the cap on top that stops that peg from coming out and that is, that is sort of how you set it up. A bit crude but it does work and as I say they do use it on the Porsches. You can see the chain set up in there so you've got one chain that drives the exhaust side, one that drives the inlet side, and then one off the front that goes down. There's a tensioner here inside, and that goes down driven by the crankshaft. In the back here, you've got the, the dynamo, is it, and the um, distributor run off the back. You've got the cush drive there, and that is driven off a, a sort of intermediate sprocket here, helical cog and um, you've got a sort of, you've got adjustment up here and these two, you slacken them off and you can move that left and right to get the proper backlash on those cogs. Um, so yeah, quite a complex setup really for the age of it. But yeah, it's getting there, almost all done and um, it's become part of the furniture now. So we'll be sort of sorry to see it go in a way, but, but glad in another. Right guys, the E46 S54 cylinder head. This is the one that had all the bent exhaust valves for whatever reason in it. Um, now I spoke to the, the chap that owns it, Chris, and um, he said the when he bought the engine, they fired it up initially and it just didn't sound right. Um, so obviously, it, the weirdly, they all vacuumed okay, except for the one end cylinder, but all the stems were kinked. So I suspect I said to him, if it wasn't for that end one that was obviously not seating on the heads, and you probably wouldn't have suspected any valve issue. Um, but what tends to happen, they seem to run all right on idle and low revs. Well, sort of okay, as long as the heads are, are creating a, a seal to the seats. But what happens is when you rev them, what can happen is because the, the stem is kinked, it can jam the valve open, piston hits the head of the valve, breaks it off, and the engine is toast. So um, we've gone for the Super Tech valves. He wants a full set. Um, I can't turn it over because I've got all the shims in, but as you can see under there, we've got all new, they're non in canal. These are all standard size, but they're super tech. And these work out pretty much getting on about 290 pound a set or something. It's about half the price of genuine valves. Um, and we all know that super tech is a good brand. So what we're doing here, I've got all the valves in, they all vacuum. Okay. Got all the springs on with the collets in. And as you can see, the setup on these S54s is the normal double valve spring with a spring top. And they've got a rocker shaft at the back and the rockers sit in between the valve and the camshaft. And you see the camshaft here, they've got a bit of a strange design on the lobe where you've got an almost uh, a concave area on one side of the lobe. Um, so to do the clearances on this, you can see they run little shims. So I'll just show you one there. That's the top of the valve. And then obviously there's a, this insertion here in the, the spring top. And then these are the shims that sit on top of the valve there. They come in various thicknesses. We have a kit here that Chris has supplied, um, but we've also got a new one in the cupboard if we need any different sizes. And they tend to go up in 0.04 of a, a mil really. Um, so they go up in a couple of thousand, thou and a half, whatever it is. So what you do is you put the shim on the top, then you put the rocker that sits on top of the shim and then doing it one at a time, because obviously these cams are gonna have to come out 
anyway to get the, the head bolts on when the head goes on. So we put the exhaust cam in first and the exhaust cam clearances are ooh, 12 thou plus or minus one thou. So we always aim for the middle. And what you do is you put the cam in, tighten all the caps down. These are the caps. You tighten it all down evenly until it's torqued up properly. And then you go off the bottom of the lobe. So you've got the, the top of the lobe here. You want the very bottom of that lobe um, on top of this pad here. And then we use our feeler gauges like this to go in between the camshaft and the rocker to find out what clearances we got. Um, so what I always do is because we've got new valves, I have cut the seats very, very slightly to make sure we've got a fresh seat on, as you've seen in the last video. And then what I do is I, whatever shims were in it, I probably go down about four thou or 0.1 of a mil in the shims to make, just so I know that we've got some clearance. Because if you, if you put too big a sh um, shim in to start with and you have no clearance, you don't know whether you've got none or it's opening the valve. So if we start off, so we've got, it doesn't matter how big the clearance is, just so we've got something to record. And then I've gone through starting at number one on this end. Um, I've just wrote down on the exhaust side, all the clearances that I've got already. Now, as you can see with the, with the shims in, they're all over the place. So we bearing in mind, we're looking at about 12 thou. Some of them are quite big um, and they're all, they're all big. There's none that are small. Now we know all the sizes that they are already. We're gonna go through these shims, measure them um, and say this one, for instance, 26, we wanna go 14 thou bigger on that particular shim um, 14 thou or 0.35 bigger on that shim to get that down to 12 thou. So we're gonna do that. And then what we do is we insert the camshaft and we just double check all the clearances once again, um, just to check that we're all right. And then we take that out, put the exhaust, put the inlet cam in and we do exactly the same procedure. Um, the reason we take the other cam out and then do the other one is because obviously if we keep that camshaft in when it isn't timed up and then we try turning this cam to get each one off on the bottom of the lobe um, you can connect with some of the valves that are already open on the exhaust side and you can you can bend valves that way so we just take that cam out put the other one in and start the procedure again right guys thumbnail and title time so you have probably been wondering over the last two or three weeks what is the latest on the, the gearbox and the core action on that? So behind the scenes, this has been going on and on. Obviously we've been liaising um, with our solicitor. He's been in contact with um, the customer, obviously who's taken us to court. Um, we've been sort of toing and froing, going over the facts and, and blah de blah. In the end guys, our solicitor has done a deal with him and we've actually paid him off. Now, the advice from our solicitor was, it's one of those situations where, although he's he's claiming for quite a lot more than the job was initially, um, it could potentially, it's almost like the guy does know what he's doing. And in the court, you've got to be aware that it's a bit of a gamble, really. It could go one way or the other. He could um, sort of favor it in your direction unlikely these days usually they favor with the with the customers um, but it could go the other way they could start you know charging you more with court fees etc and all this so we've done a deal guys the guy was going for um, 2,300 quid which is obviously a, a very bitter pill to swallow um, but we've done a deal with 1500 pounds plus the court application so just over 1600 pounds so yeah a very bitter pill to swallow guys and I'll be very interested in what some of you guys advise in the comments um, whether you think that we should have done that or not or whether we should have just called his bluff gone to court but sometimes um, it's you know I've got enough stress of running the business and the channel and what have you as it is sometimes it's just better to put things behind you as I say bite the bullet um, swallow that bitter pill and just crack on, um, move forward, you know, and obviously don't deal with this customer again. Um, it wouldn't be so bad if the amount was even just sort of twice as much as the original bill, but it's not, it's a considerable amount more. Um, 
but yeah, you live and learn and we are obviously going to be very, very careful in the future. We've had actually a couple of inquiries about gearboxes since then and we are not getting involved with them. They're not our cup of tea. We shouldn't really have got involved. Um, the guy who's played the system and used it all against us. Um, and as I say, it was before the time that you lot advised us really to get everything in writing, everything via email. Um, we didn't. We sort of, um, it was a bit of a gentleman's agreement and it's backfired on us. So yeah, onwards and upwards guys, but please do comment down below and let me know what you think on that. Paul has stripped this Pinto. So this is the Pinto in the last video we had all complete. Looked a bit like a boat anchor. As you can see, it is rather grubby on the outside. Um, but the first things first, what we had to do is strip it, inspect everything, give it all a measure and see what we've got in the engine and whether it's what they say it was really. Because as I say, um, if any of you haven't watched that last video, go back and you'll see exactly where this um, engine comes from. But it's in a... Um, it's in a Peter Sutton Mark II Escort uh, that's come from South America. And the, the, to, to cut a long story short, um, this Pinto was imported as a, as a sort of rally spec motor um, to replace the 1800, I think it was the 1800, um, BDA engine that had blown up and they couldn't get parts over there. So it was just a replacement for one of the cars. Now, Sean that owns this owns two of the cars. Um, one's got the BDA and this one's got the Pinto. So we've stripped it all. As you can see, first of all, going on the crank, we've got a little bit of wear there, but nothing out of the ordinary for a Pinto. Um, and that crank is actually standard. It measures standard. Um, going by the feel of that center main, it's getting on its on the tired side. Um, you probably find, or what you usually find is on these Pinto, a bit like the Cozzies, the shells go down to the copper and eventually it just starts you see the shell there just starts wearing into the bearing. So we're going to have to grind that, um, providing it's straight. We haven't put it up on the crank grinder yet, but I would have thought that's going to clean at 0.25 on the mains and the big ends. Um, the block here, as you can see, it's got liners in it. So this has been bored back to standard and it's got a stand, new set of standard pistons. There isn't a great deal of wear actually in the bores. So this engine hasn't done a great deal of work. Um, although there's a few water marks and on a couple of the bores there is a bit of a step so obviously it's going to need to be bored to 0.5 um, and we'll go for some standard pistons in there the pistons that are in it are standard although they have been modified on the crowns just to get the right compression ratio we're obviously going to face that block um, and we'll we shall do our dummy build on this to get our compression ratio and um, piston jut out etc cylinder head wise um, we've got huge inlet and exhaust valves in this, I think 38 mil exhaust, 44 and a half mil inlets, I think. Um, it's all been a bit ported. So the camshaft looks to us, it's got no identifications on it, but it looks to be an original Ford cam that has um, been ground down. So it's, had, it's, a, um, it's basically a, a reprofiled camshaft. You can tell by the base circle smaller. Um, now, as I say, I'm not sure where this, what spec they've gone to, but going by the Kent book, it's a, a seven and a half mil lift um, with what looks to be a sort of 300 duration. So this is marrying up really to what's in the Kent book as a, um, a rally spec group one cam um, to run on sort of 45 the Webers. Um, so this is, I would say, going by the port sizes of, and the valve sizes and this camshaft with the long duration, um, it's probably a nice torquey engine and built for mid-range. Camshaft's obviously going to have to be replaced and the head, the guides are tired in the, in the head, so we're going to have to sleeve those, but it's all clean upable, it's all doable and um, yeah, not too bad internally at all, really. So we've sent over an estimate to Sean, um, see what he thinks about that. All the bits obviously are available. And um, if he gives us a go ahead, we shall get cleaning this up and um, put the new bits in and make it look like new. And that should be absolutely lovely in one of those nice Mark II Escorts. So there we go, guys. That is the S54 cylinder head you can see with all the super tech valves in there, inlet and exhaust, absolutely lovely now, all cleaned up. Shims are all done. Um, what we've done here is 
Chris has given us two little tubs. Um, this one's the inlet tub here. Got one from the front, obviously where the timing cover is, one to 12 and all the shims are in there obviously because the cams are in loosely they've got to come out so rather than put them in the head and then get mixed up or fall out we put them all in these tubs and then we've got the exhaust ones down the bottom um, and that head is all ready to go back on now i think what had happened um, because we had those big clearances i think because these valves are brand new and they're not original they're super tech what, te what you find sometimes is if you measure them with the vernier from the, from the face down to the bottom of the stem, they, they measure absolutely what the originals do. But if it's got a, a thicker face, as in where the 45 degree on the seat of the valve is further away from the top of the valve here, what that's going to do is it, it basically in effect makes the, the head slightly thicker. Um, and that's going to make the valves sit further back, giving you a bigger clearance. So I suspect that the head of these valves here are probably going to be about 20 thou different to the original by the looks of it. Well, yet again, thanks ever so much for watching this episode. Please do comment down below on uh, what you think about our, um, our payoff to the gearbox guy. As you can see behind us, looking very, very busy. Had a few more engines turn up. Another couple turned up over there, which we'll put in the next video what they are. It's till Friday. Have a great time and uh, we'll see you in another one. Cheers.